Hi everybody, Jake here. Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, we're back with season five now of Lil Legends, the series where we try and win the Champions League with Lil. Now, if you did watch the last episode of last season, you'll know we did crash out in the Champions League semi-final, the furthest we've ever gone to Real Madrid in a very humbling defeat. And in that video, I said we'd potentially be looking at moving quite a few people on this summer and maybe just rebuilding the squad. And um, might have gone a little overboard with that. So it is the start of the new season, which of course means lots of transfers. Now, I've spent over £250 million, I think it is, and sold at least £250 million of players too. Could be even more than that, and the business is still not done. There'll likely be more business in the next episode. We're also going to be playing Mets in today's video, just uh, one of our first league games of the season to try out some of our new signings. But before we get into all of that, I'd just like to ask you guys, if you could then smash that like button for me. It would really mean a lot in terms of pushing these videos out to more people, and it really does help with video performance. So takes a few seconds if you could just click that button that would be awesome drop a comment down below what you think of my signings as well when we do eventually go and look at them do you think we've improved the squad or do you think we've maybe taken a back step that could hopefully lead to something in the future and finally if you haven't already then hit the subscribe button on the channel we're trying to hit 2400 subscribers next so if we can go for that that would be awesome obviously we probably won't do that by the end of today's video but if you could hit that button anyway that would help towards the target and ring the notification bell so don't miss out on any of the uploads here on the channel. So with that being said, I think we've covered everything and let's get straight into the transfer business that we've done this summer. So here we go guys, the transfer screen, as you can see, lots of money spent. It wasn't 250, it was near enough 250 and near enough the same amount of money brought in. We've actually made a profit in terms of what business we did. Hopefully we improve the squad. I do think we did, but we're gonna have a look at each individual transfer and see what we thought. I thought this was one of our better deals that we had as we sold Angel Gomez, who's been a bit part player for us. He has gone to rivals in some sense of the word Ren. They are of course in league room with us but they don't really get too close to the top of the table and they have lost Kamavinga to PSG. He was one of our main targets but unfortunately 100 million we couldn't fork out for him and he did go on to join PSG so Rens have lost a few players and they had some money to spend and you'll see that throughout the rest of the transfers. They kind of went for some of our squad players and this was no different. They've brought in Angel Gomez. I'm sure he'd be great for them. The thing was with him though, he didn't play all that often for me. He was a bit part player on the wing and to bring in 50 million pounds when our transfer budget that we got given was around 30 to 40 million pounds is a huge increase. Of course, I'm gonna to have to take that kind of offer for a player who doesn't play too much. And I had someone coming in who I thought could be a good replacement and we'll talk about that a bit later. Sticking on the subject of some of our players going to Rennes, Philip Benkovic, who we bought in quite early on in this series for £15 million, was a great centre-back for us, as you can see, not playing too much recently as he was one of our backup options. And again, when we got a big offer of £44 million for this guy who hadn't played too much, it's near enough £50 million to go into our budget. We had a lot of transfers that we wanted to do, and these kind of funds really allowed us to do that kind of transfer. Of course, Tadebo and Ahmed Hozic did stay. They are our main two centre-backs. And I don't think Benkovic is that important in a team that we can reject and offer that big. So near enough £100 million bought in for Benkovic and Gomez alone. And that gave us a lot of spending money in the summer. One that in a different season we could maybe have made some more money on, but his contract was running out at the end of the year. And so was Angel Gomez's, by the way. So I still think these deals represent a good financial return for us. We sold Jonathan David. He's been a backup striker for us. He was, of course, one of the stars early on when we played him up front. Then he became an inside forward, then a backup striker. You can see he never even hit a 7 average match rating. He's an amazing goal scorer for Canada and did a job for us when he played. He's going to join Juventus, that's who Zebra are, for £40 million. Again, £40 million to add to our transfer pot. And we'd already scattered a striker who was better than him in pretty much every way for way less money. And it just made sense. So Jonathan David has left the club. Probably one of the ones that I would have liked to have kept him round due to his versatility. But for that kind of money, he has to go. And if you actually look at his attributes, not that great of a player really when you're looking at him. And you can kind of tell by the scout report, we don't really rate him too highly for £40 million. One of the best deals we managed to pull off was selling back up right back Nordi Mukiel for around £30 million, exactly £30 million it was. He had been good for us for quite a while, although as you can see, not really appearing much, 15 times and 16 times in the two seasons he played for us. And he came in for £3 million, so to quickly turn that round into 30 I think it's a great deal. He was a versatile player, a good right back option and a decent centre-back option. I almost cancelled it because we haven't actually replaced him yet as a backup right-back. But for that kind of money, again, I can't really reject it. He's gone to join West Brom, which kind of shows his quality. They're a championship team. Maybe he wasn't that great of a player after all, and we're trying to win the Champions League. So these kind of players had to move on. Similar to Yachty last year, who went to Blackburn in the championship. These players that we thought were key players maybe aren't so much. So that was another £30 million bought in there. £27 million bought in for Olivier and Cham, another one whose contract was running out. He's getting a bit older in age probably one of the I don't want to say one of the worst signings we made but he was brought in to do a very good job for us as a backup midfielder 
He featured less and less, but always appeared here and there in the games, the easier games. So bear in mind that some of these squad players might look better in terms of average match rating because they played all of the easiest matches when we wanted to rest the big boys for the Champions League match. So to make a profit on him, I thought was a good deal. Yes, he's probably worth more now, but we don't really need to worry about that. Again, as you can see, not the world's best player. And to bring that kind of money in for a player who our scouts now deem as very average, it makes sense to me. Another player of ours that has gone to join Wren is Dominic Levakovic. He's been our goalkeeper since the start of this series, pretty much. He's been very solid for us. I always give him a lot of stick, but he's never done too much wrong for us. And he's now got two clean sheets in two games for Wren. So he's doing well from there. Only £22 million. The reason he left was because I've been identifying a goalkeeper who is probably the best young goalkeeper in the world in this save of football manager, and we had to bring him in. We'll talk about him a bit later, but it will make sense when you see it. Levakovic has moved on, 29 years of age probably wouldn't have had another contract or any value when we sold him in the future so to get some money from now seemed to make sense to me. Now we're going to look at a few more less key players who have moved on for a significant chunk of money. Lucas Chevalier who was our backup goalkeeper pretty much since the start here. You probably never even noticed him because he barely ever played. £10 million for him when he's only appeared eight times in the last few seasons I think is a great deal. Again more money to add to our pot. Similarly, we had a good young prospect at the start of the save. He's now a Belgium international apparently, but Wissam Lantaki was like one of the best youth prospects at Lille when we started this save. And he's a very good player, but never really appeared for us too much. Didn't do too great on loan at two Belgian clubs when we sent him out to the Belgian league. Never did that much there where you thought he should do. I tried to train him into the kind of left back I'd like to see, but he's never going to get there. We've got Sasuke as well, who we'll talk about a little bit later too, who is just a way better player than him at a younger age. So made sense that he would be the backup to Aaron Martin and Lantaki can move on where I'm sure he'll have a great career at Feyenoord. A couple of channel viewer players were also on the move so we'll just quickly cover them. Moritz Meyer we brought in last summer for free. We sold him straight away for £3.6 million. Makes sense to me. I'm sure he's going to go on to have a good career at Monaco but for that kind of money, that kind of age, we've got better prospects. It made sense. He was a director of football signing when he was brought in so to sell him wasn't that big of a deal to me. Marco Stamenkic has left for £3 million. He was another one that we bought him for free with the aim of selling them on in the future, and that worked. Hoop Faber, if you are watching, unfortunately you have been sold, but you should have a very good career in the future, despite a very poor start for your new club in Portugal. But again, someone that was never going to get near our team, we got offered 500 grand. We weren't going to give him a new deal. Made sense. It's still a pretty decent player at 19 years of age, but never going to be good enough. And that's every sale that we did make. Everyone else is out on loan. As you can see, a lot of our really good talented youngsters have gone out on loan a lot of these are channel viewer players so if you want to ask where your player is feel free to drop a comment and i'll let you know how they're getting on in their career but now the exciting part who have we brought in to help this team push to the next level well we start off with a few of the less substantial transfers this guy was a director of football signing again similar to Moritz Meyer, who he just sold for three million pounds the idea of this guy bringing him for free and sell him for a profit in a year or two would make sense to me another free deal that we did was to bring in Pippi he was a Real Madrid youngster still ranked very highly in terms of his potential and I'm basically bringing him in to sell him on in the future but it made sense to me he was on a free uh, no contract at all we've brought him in loaned him straight out to Braga one of the better teams in Portugal where in two games he scored a hat-trick with three goals and is looking awesome for them so I'm sure in the future he'll either be a big part of our team but with them attributes Yes, some very good attributes, but I imagine he will be sold. He's still a wonder kid, but yeah, uh, someone to make some profit in the future should the series continue. Aiden Hazard was a deal that I've had uh, under wraps for quite a long time. Midway through the last season, actually, he was already sorted. Yes, he's old. Yes, he's probably not that good anymore, but as an option in a variety of positions, a little legend in his own right. He's actually on the Legends page higher up than me, despite the fact that we've brought so much success to Lil, but... While we're on the topic, actually, I will quickly show you that. So after everything we've done with Lil, we are still just in the favoured personnel section. Yet there's people like Aaron Martin in the legends section, which is fair enough that I think at least we'd be in the icon section by now. But no, a lot of players, managers who I imagine haven't done anywhere near what I've done for the club, to be honest, like Matteo Debushi. Was he really that good for Lil that, you know, I've brought this team to a four and a half star reputation now, which, by the way, has increased. I've won multiple competitions with the club. I thought I'd be an icon or at least a legend by now, almost guaranteed, but it doesn't seem to go that way. But yes. Eden Hazard has been brought to the club. I've met Chelsea fan in real life and he is one of my favourite players ever to have played the game that I've watched. So Eden Hazard is in, either footed. What a star he's going to be for us on a free deal. Yes, we're paying him quite a lot of money, but versatile in a lot of positions and he allowed for the likes of Angel Gomez and David to move on without too much hassle. Speaking of David moving on, we needed a backup striker to Arezo and we found this guy. I did mention we found a player for a lot cheaper who was a lot better at a younger age. It's Brazilian striker Celso Jung. He's valued at £35 million, ranked as a four-star striker with five-star ability. Now, you might notice that that's actually classed as higher than Arezo as a striker. He's probably not going to start ahead of Arezo just because of the kind of striker he is. As you can see, he's six foot one with 16 jump and reach and 19 heading. If he was a little bit quicker, 
he'd definitely be in my first team. Yes, his finishing isn't that great, but that's not too big of a deal in Football Manager this year. We're trying to focus on his quickness. If we can get those attributes to like 15, 16, I'd say he's a complete player and he would be up front for me in most of these games. Arezo as well, while we're on the topic, is unhappy at the club because he wanted to leave to join her for Berlin. We did originally plan to accept £100 million from, from them. We then decided we couldn't because the idea was sell him and bring in Sebastian Esposito, the best striker in this simulation currently, even better than Haaland right now. Although Barcelona just came in above us, took him, he wanted to join Barcelona, so he went. We then had a disgruntled Arezo because we cancelled his deal and he's still a bit annoyed right now. He could potentially still move in this window, but I don't think I will just because there's no striker of his quality available. If there was one, I wouldn't be too opposed to getting rid of him. He's been a good striker for us, but I think we can do better than 20 odd goals a year in this kind of team. So maybe Celso Jung is the answer. Maybe Arezo has now got some proper competition instead of David, no offence, Jonathan David, that can really push him to another level. So that's Celso Jung. He's been bought in from Fluminense out in Brazil. Then another signing that we did make, as you know, we did sell Benkovic. We needed a fourth centre-back option. Umtiti was transfer listed. Yes, he's not the best player in the world. He's only going to be a squad option for us though. Seven million pounds. He won't appear that much. We just needed a body there and he's someone with a bit of experience too. So fair enough. Samuel Umtiti is in. Probably the signing that if I could choose one not to do, it would have been him, but we do need a fourth choice centre-back. And we were kind of forced into it when we saw how much of an offer they were giving us for Benkovic. Um, now getting to the biggest signings of this window. Celso Jung, I think, could be a really good deal for £14 million, but the ones that we bought in, hoping that they will automatically definitely perform, were these three players. So we're starting off with Hussam Awa, the central midfielder. You probably all know him. French, playing for Lyon, one of the best midfielders in the league for a long time. Actually won best player in the league last season in Ligue 1. Within this save, so I felt like we almost had to bring him in. You can see he had a great year that year. He's already played one game for us, scored one goal and assisted another goal. He's going to feature for us in central midfield and attacking midfield. And he's just really bolstered our midfield options with Uncham going the other way. I think Awa is a great signing to bring in. Despite Okone being quite good for us in recent years, I've always felt a little bit underwhelmed by him and felt that we needed some real good competition on that side. Billy Kwok is still in a channel viewer player and I think he's going to have a great future, but someone who right now is already better than Okone and probably one of the best inverted right-sided players in the world, it's Anthony from Ajax. We played a significant amount for him, £70 million. Pounds. He's apparently valued at less, but I'm not really too bothered about that. We wanted to bring him in. We got the deal done. He's pretty good in every area. I don't really know what to say about him. I haven't seen him in game just yet. And I'm hoping that when we do see him, he will perform really well for us. And finally, the big deal. We spoke about Rens having a lot of money to spend. They lost Kamavinga and they also made £100 million from a deal that we made. Now, the board are very happy with this deal, which goes to show just how good of a player this guy is. It's Anthony Massey. He is the best young goalkeeper in this save, better than Donnarumma. He's 19 years of age and has already appeared nine times for the French national team. We all know how good France are in world football and the fact that he's already taken over as their best goalkeeper and has been for quite a number of years now. Is just crazy. He's only just turned 19 too. Some really great attributes, five star potential, three and a half star player. Lavakovic at his peak was three and a half star, I think. So very happy with him. A low wage too. Yes, he did cost us a lot of money, but like I say, the board are very happy with him. A great player, tall, six foot six, really nice jumping reach, really good goalkeeping attributes too. I find it hard to talk about a goalkeeper, but I think just looking at him, you can see his quality. And I think he's definitely an improvement on Lavakovic. Now we also still have 50 million pounds left to spend, like I say. The chances are by next video we'll still have some more players brought in. Arezo wants to leave. Cousant's got a £100 million offer from Manchester United literally a few days ago in game, which we rejected. They might come back in for him. There's a lot that could still potentially happen, but our team does currently look like this in terms of squad depth. That's just a general first 11. That's probably what I'll go with. It's a very good team. Likelihood is a while will be further forward. Cousant will be in the midfield with Cooper Myers, just because I really like the defensive side of Cooper Myers' game. Barrow. Maybe needs improving as a left-sided option, but as you can see, Arezo is being said as not the best striker at the club anymore. So really interesting what we might find out this season. We won't be seeing Celso Jung today, who I'm really excited to see. Haven't seen him yet, but he's got shin splints and has been out for quite a while. Hopefully he comes back soon in the season so we can have a look at him. So here we go. Anthony Massey is our goalkeeper. As you know, we did sell our backup goalkeeper too in Chevalier. So Andres Medina, another channel viewer, if you're watching, you are now our backup goalkeeper. Probably won't play too much as you saw from Chevalier's appearances, but he's still there as an option. Left backs are Aaron Martin and Sasuke. I said I'd speak about Sasuke because he's so good. He's now sometimes considered by scouts as better than Aaron Martin. And we had a £55 million offer from Leeds for him, which goes to show age of 19, this is a very good left back. And I think we've got a left back position sorted for years to come. Right back is where we still need to buy a player. The £50 million pounds I've got in the bank will likely go for a player there. Try not to use all of it, but if we have to, I'm not really bothered too much. I just want to fill the squad out with some great quality. 
Should Sadibo or Akman Hozic get injured in a crucial point in the season, Tiny Cox is there currently, but he might get loaned out. Although he's now valued at £35 million. Pounds. I didn't see that. £31 million, pounds, sorry. But still, that's a lot of money. Tottenham apparently in for him. We've probably got a better player on our hands here than I originally thought we did, but he's just not been performing that well when we use him. I say that. Sevens aren't bad at all. He's fine. We'll be fine. Although his star ratings aren't very flattering in the centre-back position, I think we're fine there. Midfield is where we're completely stacked, particularly these two central midfielders. I've also kind of thought about the idea of switching to a defensive midfielder as opposed to an attacking midfielder, but we've got so much quality there, but it's not going to be my primary formation. However, Cooper Myers, Cousins, Awa and Sanchez could all perform in this role here if we needed to a little bit deeper. So that's something that we can do. But as you can already see, Awa, Cooper Myers, Sanchez and Cousins, a great midfield four. Then going further forward, we've got Bruno Almada and also the two central midfielders who are also good in them positions. Bruno now considered better than Thiago Almada. In my opinion, that's about right. He plays much better football in-game, and I really like this guy. Some really great attributes in him. Yes, he does need to improve in some areas, but Almada hasn't been super, super good recently, so I think Bruno is the future of that position at such a young age too. On the left flank, we've got the likes of Ikone, Barrow, Hazard, and Anthony who can perform there, and on the right side, Anthony, Ikone, and Billy Kwok. Billy Kwok looks like a very good young player and has been performing really well for us recently. Maybe he'll go out on loan, but I don't think so. And then up front, we've got Jung, Arezo, and if both of them got injured, Anthony could go further forward, and Ikone on the right. So I think we really have improved our squad. That's probably took way longer than you expected, but so many transfers did go through that we had to go through them. Our schedule recently, friendlies we did fine, I don't manage them. We then beat PSG in the Trophy de Champion. Ikone, Akman Hozic and Cousins getting our goals there. And then the first game of the season, we did really well against Guancamp. I wanted to see a really big show of domination and we did. Ikone, Barrow, Arezo, Tadebo and Awa getting on the score sheet there. So with that being said, I'm just going to hop straight into the game. After quickly looking at the team we're using, as you can see, Massey, the first time he's going to appear on the channel in a video, he's been someone that's been a key part of this save when we played against him, but we haven't really shown Ren too much in this save because we do a lot of Champions League videos, but he is really good. Emerson, Tadebo, Akhmed Hozic, Aaron Martin, Kusons and Cooper Myers with Ikone, Uwa, Barrow and Arezo. Arezo isn't happy, but I'm hoping that that will eventually wear off. So yeah, that's the team. Hopefully we get a win today. Have we got space for another sub? We have. So let's get Sasuke on the bench. I do want to see Anthony as well. I don't really know why he isn't being put on the bench. So we'll actually, you know what, we'll use him ahead of Ikone just so we can see what our best team would be. And I think that's about right right now. Maybe Bruno will go ahead of Awa and eventually Awa will play in the midfield. I might be pronouncing his name wrong, but that's what we're going for, Awa. But you can see, still loads of wanted signs on our players, so anything could still happen. But that's our team today, so let's get straight into the match and hopefully get a win. Okay, here we go. We are off against Mets here. I always say it, but in a game like this, we don't show many league games. I want pure domination. Like the Champions League games, I don't mind having a battle, but these kind of games with our top squad on at the start of the season when we can afford to use our best team in the league, I want to see them doing really well, and I hope we see that today. Um, as you already know, the aim of the series is to win the Champions League. When we win it, the series will end. I think we're getting quite close to that level right now. Arezo going in and scoring already after 11 minutes. You know, if we score one every 10 minutes, we could technically win 9-0 here, so who knows? But great ball from Barrow, great finish by Arezo. This is what I expect in a game like this. But as I was saying, I hope the Champions League isn't a long way off. With the amount of money that we're making now, the reputation our club has, if we weren't to win it this year, we can still perform at a level, I think, to get there again. We also kind of need to because Kusant is happy to stay at the club as long as we challenge for the Champions League. If we don't do that this year, he's got a promise where if we don't do that, he will leave straight away. So I do hope that we can keep him around because he's been really good for us recently. But so far, so good. And the next time you see us will likely be the Champions League group stage. I'd expect another goal by now though. Come on, let's step it up a little bit. But yes, a group stage of the Champions League. Obviously, the aim of this series is the Champions League. So that's what I'm going to show more regularly. I'm surprised there hasn't been more goals so far, but maybe this is a chance for us to see some of our new players with Anthony on the ball for the first time. This first time I'm seeing him too. He came in very recently and didn't play the first match. I think he was injured. But it's a good ball in there. Mets defend well. And that is the end of that chance. So it looks like half time. We're only going in at 1 0 up, but pretty dominant so far. Possession and chances. I can't really complain about that. Do drop a comment down below, you guys, where you think I can improve the squad. I think maybe it's defensively. I used to think defensively was the best place we had. But when I look at it, is Tadebo and Ahmed Hozic a good enough partnership to win the Champions League? Maybe it is, but I can't be 100% sure. We're going to already look at some subs in a minute because Mets might have just got a goal here. Good save from Massey. Do have a check out down below in the description for the link to the Discord. If we can reach 100 people on the Discord, that would be great. So it's a great community of people who share their tips and all that good stuff. They've even started a fantasy league for the Euros. So if you want to join that, then feel free. But yeah, a really great community on there. People just talk about regular football. 
and share things about Football Manager, which is always great to see. A really vibrant community there going so far, and I'm always happy to see it on my phone when it just starts dinging because people are talking. But great play by Anthony on the right side there, pulling it back for Arezo, and that is 2 0 up after 60 minutes, and we'll look at some subs soon just to make sure we don't get any silly injuries in a game like this. But it's been very dominant. I just wish we'd scored more. It looks like that our chances haven't been on target all that much. Jake Fuller, if you're watching, the channel viewer, you're currently playing for Mets on the right wing for them. Not playing too well today, but I think you're okay. You can, you can have an off day while you're against us for sure. But let's have a look at some substitutes that we can make. Maybe have a look at some of the new players. I think we'll bring on Hazard, just because why not bring on Hazard and have a look at him in game. Who else isn't performing all that well? I mean, who's most tired too? You know what? I think it's worth bringing Uwar off. He's had a good game and we'll just leave it as that. Bring Bruno on there. And then Sanchez, we don't really want to upset him. He's still a very key part of this team. He can play as the Mazala next to Cooper Myers. So it seems like our transfers have been a lot more interesting than the actual game itself. Maybe we'll get another goal here. A screamer would be great. But just, a, I, I always say it, but just a really big thank you because we're in season five now. When I started this series, I didn't expect to get to five seasons and still have people watching. Hazard should have scored there, by the way. But the fact that we have, and it only seems to be growing and growing, which is awesome, particularly when we do these transfer videos, it, it, it's great to see. Um, like like I said, I didn't expect five seasons. I thought maybe we'd win this. I think I said it at the start, three seasons-ish. I expect to be start to really get close to winning. It was a bigger challenge than I thought it would be, but I've really enjoyed it. Lille have been a great team to manage, and Massey makes a good save there. There we go. We keep a clean sheet by the looks of it so far in today's game. But yeah, I have been really happy with everything uh, on the channel as a whole, on FM Scout as a whole. Obviously, I do some videos over there too. And just, yeah, the, the support has been awesome, guys. So thank you for that. And Hopefully you continue to enjoy the series and hopefully we can end it with some success fairly soon. Aaron Martin with a great ball in there, Tadebo with a header. I suppose it's also a good thing that this series continues. Not only do I enjoy making it and you guys seem to receive it quite well, but at this stage in Football Manager, would I really start a new series? I don't know. Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. If we were to win it this year, maybe. But if it goes on for another series or so, another season or so, should I say, that might just be the end of videos on this channel for FM21. Who knows what we'll do? But oh, we've conceded. This is the problem that we always get. We always concede in these kind of games, which is fine. We are winning 3-1, but it goes to show when we come against the big teams, they will get goals. We seem to leak goals, and it may be a tactical thing, actually, because we've got some good players on the pitch. Something I'll have to have a look at for sure. Nothing you can really do about a goal like that. But yeah, um, overall, just really happy with everything. Thank you guys for all your support, and hopefully we can end the series soon with a really good Champions League win, because we deserve it. We've been really good in the last few years, and Eden Hazard, that's why we brought him in. What a hero. He's found the goal. Found the net for the first time in a long time for Lil. He was a great player for them. Obviously, then he went to sign for Chelsea after a really, really good season for Lil. He did the famous tweet of saying, I'm signing for the Champions League winners. By the way, as a Chelsea fan, I hope Erling Haaland will do something like that fairly soon. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But what a game this has been for us. Four goals, completely dominant. If we hadn't conceded, I would have been perfectly happy with that. I believe Mets are actually one of Lil's rivals, if we have a look. I don't know all that much about, like... Uh, geometry and fans ge geometry geography geography not geometry we're not looking at triangles here but if we go to general we can see no it's lens not met sorry but still very happy with that a great win some of our new players getting in there like hazard and anthony doing some good stuff for the team and i think we'll have a good chance of doing semi-finals again in the champions league i'm gonna say hopefully we can push on to a final this year but we've got the squad we've still got time to bring in some more players so maybe you'll see some more transfers by next episode you'll know by the title i'm sure but champions cup group is soon to be drawn and then we'll show you a group game so thank you for watching guys and hopefully you have enjoyed today's video do let me know what you think of my transfers like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel a big thank you yet again i know i waffled on a bit there in the game about it but genuinely it does mean a lot to me when i get this kind of support and yeah didn't think we'd get to this point so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye